How's it going everybody? Welcome to another episode of Word on the Street Photo. My name is Tim. I'm a street photographer enthusiast here to entertain you, inspire you, and educate you on the beautiful genre of street photography. Now I've done a few reaction videos on street photography festivals, street photography contests, seeing the finalist images, winners. Those have been a lot of fun for me to do. In this episode, I'm going to be reacting to masters at work within the street photography genre. Yeah, it's about to get juicy. You know, when you search street photography on YouTube, there's a gazillion videos, hundreds of street photography channels. And you know what, I'm gonna be quite honest, as great as it is that a lot of people are out doing street photography, it's a bit saturated. So one of the things I like to do to kind of re-inspire myself, re-educate myself on the genre or the practice of street photography is looking at some of my favorite photo books, watching old archival videos on masters or street photographers I idolize uh, at work, doing their thing. Sometimes that little light, <coughs> Sometimes that can reignite the passion for street photography for me all over again. Just like that. That simple. So I'm going to be watching and scrubbing through a few videos of some of the masters within the street photography genre, reacting to them. So enough talking, let's get straight into it. The first street photographer I'll be watching right now is legendary street photographer from Philadelphia, Mark Cohen. Mark Cohen has been shooting for decades. He's still alive. He's still active and shooting out on the street, shooting on film. He's best known for his books, Dark Knees, True Colors, Frame, getting real close to his subject, shooting flash shooting in his backyard of Philadelphia. And what's really inspiring to me is, as I mentioned, he's been shooting for decades, and I believe he's in his late 70s, and he's still going strong out shooting on the street. No online presence, he doesn't have an Instagram, no website, he doesn't believe on any publicity that's online. He likes only physical shows, anything that's gonna be printed or gallery showing, anything with a physical space, physical presence, that's what interests Mark Cohen. Because believe me, I tried getting him to do a few things, and uh, yeah, didn't work. Oh, by the way, I'll have all the links to the videos in the, the description box right down below. You guys can check them out for your own education, own inspiration, things like that. And I also gotta say this video is from Michael Engler's YouTube channel. I believe he produced a lot of these videos back in like the late 70s, early 80s. So go ahead and give him a subscribe, show him some support, and let's just keep sharing the good. Watch the different things that happen. Bring the camera very close. And um, you know, I can try to make a picture of his neck. You want to watch it because it's right over here. You know? You're make a picture of your neck, you know? Like that. <laughs> 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 If I was to do that, I get punched in the face. Damn, Mark is fearless. He's only like three inches away from the guy's face. And the crazy thing is he tells him he's gonna photograph his face. God damn. Now this is crazy. I gotta give Mark all the credit in the world right here because this is prior to social media. This is in 1978, I believe. You have a cameraman following you. You have a camera and a flash gun and you see some of his techniques. He's telling the camera guy what he's gonna photograph and sometimes very specific, not just the person, but the necklace, the neck, all that stuff. And he just goes up and takes the pictures. I mean, it clearly shows Mark's is confident when he's out on the street. He doesn't feel like he's doing anything wrong. He's not afraid of potentially getting hurt or someone getting mad at him he just goes right out there and just photographs it and keeps walking away i mean that's a great technique in my eyes just photographing and just continuing walking but his he's really close his is obvious that he's taking a photograph of the person it's not like he's six ten feet away where potentially he might be just photographing within the area not you specifically one of the techniques i gotta applaud mark is that he just goes up and tells the person hey i'm gonna photograph your face okay boom and he just does it before the person even answers or has time to even process it. You know, because if you tell the person or ask the person that you're gonna take their photograph and you just give them enough time to process what you said and they reject you, and then you still take their photograph, shit can go down. So Mark, he's just smooth like brother, man. I think a lot of people that are new to street photography, they always have that same question. Oh, how do you avoid confrontation? Do people get mad at you when you take their photograph? Just watch this video of Mark Cohen at work. Do what he does, take the photograph and just keep walking. Don't even make eye contact. Let's just keep watching. Mark, he's that type of photographer that just enjoys the process of going out, seeing things, and just snapping the shutter button. I think a lot of us, because with social media nowadays, we lose sight of that. We get too ingrained whether or not, you know, we should post this photo on Instagram. Is it too over-processed? We overthink it, and then we just keep it on the hard drive and never see it again. Or rather, it prevents us from even clicking the shutter button. So far, I really like what I'm seeing from Mark Cohen. And then watching this video, Mark is very articulate. He knows what or why he's photographing, and you can see in his photos, like, 
like not just being up close and personal to the subject matter, but the awkward or the weird gestures and poses of people are doing right then and there. And the fact that he understands that and that kind of excites him, like that really gives him an opportunity to create a consistent body of work. Another note, there is a rumor out there that apparently Mark Cohen was the first person that introduced Flash to Bruce Gilden. I don't know if that's true. That's the word on the street. Who knows? So yeah, if you guys are in need of a new challenge, you know, just mix things up. Give the Mark Cohen technique a try. So the next video we're going to watch is from the legendary Magnum Street photographer, Bruce Gilden, who's still active today. I don't know how old this video is, but the Bruce Gilden of today does not photograph this way or this style. But I'm definitely more interested in Bruce Gilden's older work anyways. I haven't seen this video before, so let's just get straight into it. In the street, I was hungry. Oh, bam, just jumped straight in front of him. Here's another Frailers photographer, Bruce Gilden. Similar to Mark Cohen style, a little bit different. He's gonna walk the streets of New York and identify a particular subject matter that catches his eye. And you see a few of his photos there. They were vertical. When you have the backdrop of New York City, buildings and things like that, and it's in black and white with flash, it just gives that eerie, elongated feel to it. I love the older work of Bruce Gilden. It's very inspiring. I work so close that sometimes when people think I'm I'm not photographing them when I'm photographing them. They look behind Man, Those are great. You see with Bruce and Mark, they're not just taking photographs. They really understand the environment that they're shooting in, their city, their home. And they're just trying to capture that from like a local perspective. You see Bruce right there just talking to the old man of what he was doing or just kind of giving him a little bit of direction. I personally don't want to open the floodgates and open that dialogue. I know there's other street photographers that like to talk to them what they're doing, uh, why they photograph them. I generally just like to avoid that as much as possible unless I can feel some kind of positive energy from the other person. Nine out of 10 times I just photograph kind of similar to what uh, Mark does. I photograph and I just walk away. I think Bruce, he loves confrontation or doesn't mind this. He doesn't feel like he's doing anything wrong you know he's not breaking the law or hurting anybody he's photographing in the public space and he knows he has every right to do that so yeah I mean, oh, you know, that's a nice photo i love these photos I'm generally not a fan of vertical street photographs, but Bruce Gilden makes it look so good and so effortless that I'm thinking about trying it myself. I like how that one guy just told Bruce like you can't take a picture or whatever and Bruce just told him right back, hey, you don't own the streets, all right? I'm not saying you need to go out and do that. He does have a background. He was a boxer back in the days. He ain't afraid of nobody. In this video, he's 61. He's much older now, but I'm sure he still has that same fighting spirit. For those of you that don't know Bruce's style and approach to photography has changed within the past decade. Part of it, I'm sure, is creative endeavors, but I think a lot of it has to do with his physical condition because he's older now. I've attended a Bruce Gilden talk before and he has an assistant that drives him around or he goes to a particular area where there's a lot of people like a carnival or a fair. To me, that's great that he's still finding the motivation, the inspiration to still go out there. Somebody that's talented like Bruce Gilden, I wish he could physically keep this pace for as long as he could live because he would be getting great street photographs, great scenes out on the street rather than individual faces. But sometimes that's what you gotta do. You just adjust with what you have and what you're physically capable of. At the end of the day, don't try to be somebody that you're not. Don't try to be the next Bruce Gilder and then practice every little detail that he does. Photograph the way you know how, adjust, make tweaks here and there. I love these videos. These are short, straight to the point, and you really get a lot of information within four or six minute time frame. See how they approach street photography, their shooting style, how they kind of avoid or diffuse situation. Uh, these are great. My favorite book from Bruce Gilden is Coney Island. If you're a street photography fan, enthusiast, that's a book you definitely need to have in your library. The other book I have of Bruce Gilden and I wouldn't recommend it is his newer style, a fairly new book, Face. It's street portraits of people that he photographed in carnivals or the slums within America. Definitely not a bedtime story for kids. The next one we're gonna watch at work is legendary Gary Winogrand. Man, rest his soul, Mr. Winogrand. I wish he was alive today. Just the evolution of cameras and photography and I wonder what he would think of street photography today and like would he be using the iPhone would he still be shooting on film you know would he be posting on Instagram daily what would he think of all the technology and the changes because you know a lot of people claim him to be a photographer's photographer somebody that goes out and just shoot just shoots every day just go in zen mode and just document the streets without worrying about processing the film roll you know similar to Vivian Meyer I always respect people that just go out and shoot man they just 
enjoy the process of going out part of their routine and they're not doing it to stay relevant or compete against their other uh, colleagues or contemporaries they're just going out there for themselves so yeah let's just watch this video and doesn't want to have the multifaceted way he tackles reality I believe Winogrand used focal lengths ranging from 28, 35, and 50. I, I hate the term. I think it's a stupid term, street photography. I don't think it, it makes any... Oh, that's a first. It, I've it seen this video before or clips of it, but I don't remember him saying that he thinks the term street photography is stupid. And I know there's other photographers out there that think the term is dumb and it just kind of pigeonholes photography as a whole. Sometimes you just need to categorize things to differentiate the genre. Photography is so general that it just to mesh everything into one. It's, nah, I like the term street photography. Now you gotta remember there's a camera person following these photographers right so he's still using his technique like just fiddling with the camera and then playing dumb despite somebody recording him <laughs> i love the technique that winogram does and how he pulls it off i do use this technique from time to time although i've noticed that it draws more attention than it should because you're fiddling with the camera and you're trying to play dumb and then people will start to notice down the streets i like how he's not trying to intimidate other people or stare people down like bruce would do winogram kind of comes off like harmless like he's not out there to maliciously make a bad photograph of you or at least that's how I, I'm feeling it right now. So there you have it reacting to legends like Mark Cohen, Bruce Skilden, Winner Grant at work. If you guys enjoy a video like this, let me know in the comment section down below if I should do more of these. Definitely a great reminder how to go outside and take photographs, make pictures happen, learn a few new techniques and just understanding their philosophical approach, why they're making a photograph, what they're trying to include in a frame. Uh, it's really enlightening. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, hit the subscribe button and you know that bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that and every time I upload a new video or content, you'll be the first to be notified. Until then, Keep shooting and be safe.